Hello everybody, Darren here, and welcome back to Cities Skylines. Now in the last episode, we welcomed over a thousand new residents to our town, which is now classed as a busy town. Locking more services and larger variants of buildings for us to use, as well as all sorts of new parks, policies, and lots of things that we'll be able to use later down the line, like props, decals, and stuff to make things look a little bit prettier. We've also established our first bus route to great success, as the demand to use that route was far larger than I expected initially. Now today, I'm hoping to continue this ongoing expansion, but just slightly slow it down a bit, and spend a bit more time with the various districts, building out parks, choosing different policies, putting some services down, and adding more bus routes to take a little bit of the pressure off of those high traffic areas. So, let's begin. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the busy town of Swords. So, we're currently rocking 100,000 in the bank, about 6,300 in terms of population, and we're going to be looking to zone out this remaining area here. For the first time in a very long time, we can actually see there's some commercial demand, which is amazing. Now, one little change I've made is I moved this pathway, which was previously here, over to here. And good thing I did, because I was just thinking that it would make a bit more sense to put it right next to where these buildings already happen to appear. It just seemed like that would be a good idea to do, and now these ones will hopefully fill in with a bit more commercial zoning. Also got some ideas for this area that we'll touch up on in the future, but people had a lot of admiration for this public library. They think it looks really nice. I think it looks great. It's a nice centerpiece to the city, although not many people are using it. 29 people visited it last week, so I don't know what percentage that is of 6,300, but it is not many. But either way, I think, you know, it obviously provides a general boost to education anyway, so it's not too bad. All right, so... Residential zoning, let's begin. So we've already got this area zoned out. I'm just going to zone this one as well. And just get a bit more liberal with my zoning. I feel like I'm a little too particular with it. I feel like just let them move in and we'll uh, remove them if they uh, don't seem like they fit the area, you know? <laughs> um, something like that would be fine. All right, so we'll just zone this, zone this, and try to get all these people in. So I haven't actually really checked on it in a while. The game's been running for maybe a couple weeks, I think, in-game since the last episode. So we can see how our bus route's doing now. 150 passengers, it says. And we have 10 vehicles for 10 stops. Some people have suggested maybe making the bus routes shorter. I don't really know necessarily why you'd want to do it. I know it's, it's a fairly long route. I'm, I'm not confused by that or anything, but I think it's a pretty good size. It goes between two commercial zones, you know? I, I wouldn't really want to go much bigger than that, but for the grand scheme of things, I think that's a pretty normal size route that we've got going on there. Now, I've been noticing there's just a few little traffic issues that are piling up in various different areas. I've just turned on the landfill, so this is just a series of garbage trucks that are heading towards the recycling center, so don't worry about that just yet. But we're going to get really down in the weeds in this episode and start getting really particular with traffic. I was reading the comments pretty closely. The last one to do with parking, to do with different road signals or different road types that we could use, and just suggestions all around for what we could do. Some people, I think, are suggesting things that are just too far off for where I'm currently at right now. In my opinion, things like trams... Uh, and, uh, uh, God, I can't think of oh, metro systems and things like that. You know, I just don't think we need to go there just yet because we only have 7,000 people, not even. So let's just slow it down a bit. It's all good. Um, but the plan is going to be to build out to this way. Hopefully when we get to the next milestone, which is big town in this one, it's quite interesting. We unlock high density residential, commercial, and offices. The interesting thing about that is that we'll really, for the first time, have like We'll see the inverse of what I've been talking about. These houses have, you know, three, four people in them ever, pretty much. Maybe five if you include kids or whatever. But the high density, they're going to have like 30, 40, potentially. So you'll really have to have good infrastructure, good traffic infrastructure to handle what's going on up there in public transport and stuff. I've been very liberal down here with just making squiggly lines and seeing how it all flows together. And for the most part, it's been working just fine. But we'll really, I'll properly forward plan as best as I can anyway when we get to the high-density buildings, which are probably going to be out this way somewhere, I think, in the future. And when we unlock this tile as well, we'll have this nice, hopefully, kind of road that leads across the coastline. That's that's kind of my overall general idea. Um, I just saw that. There's actually a little fire going on right now. Now, something else I thought we could touch on just really quickly before I then just start doing one thing at a time. Currently, our population demographics has me a little bit worried because seniors just seem to be hanging on, <laughs> you know, a little longer than I would anticipate. And so much so that I think we're actually losing workers over at the farm, the agricultural industry. So we're at 403. Used to be at about 420. And it's kind of fallen down a bit. Just went to 400. So uneducated workforce is pretty much full. 2, 211 out of 212. Perfect. 
educated, 62 out of 204, and that's why I wanted to put down the public library and get a bit more just standard education going for people. There's nobody in there for highly educated, so we need to hit the next milestone before we can get a university anyway, so I don't expect that. But it does seem like... Wow, the demand for commerce has actually really jumped, which is good to see, I guess. But it does seem like, yeah, the numbers are kind of starting to slowly trickle down a bit. So I want to get ahead of that problem. Just make sure new people are moving in and matching the rate of death with the rate of births. So what we can do is actually place some buildings that will help encourage that childcare and stuff. So that's what I'm going to do. All right, so let's check out this bus route. We'll just focus on one thing at a time. So we just built this bus route. We can check here. It's just called the blue line. 10 stops, 10 vehicles, 154 passengers. We can see that the buses are quite often full, but not totally. I would say we're pretty much exactly where we want to be with this right now. You know, 15 out of 30, 30, 30, and not many people waiting. Maybe 30 people are waiting there, 26 here. But the bus that's arriving is about to just collect quite a few of these people and drop off others. So I think we're actually handling this route quite nicely with 10 on it. But a lot of people suggest it. In fact, I've got a comment here from Patrick Gao. What about having another bus line going in the opposite direction? That way, it's not just one way. Yeah, I don't know why I didn't really think of this. I mean, that is a common thing to do, but I sort of just thought like, oh, people just go around. But obviously you want to cut down on that. If someone wants to just go the other way, one or two stops over, they'd have to go eight stops before they get there. So obviously that doesn't make any sense. So let's do that. We'll do that first. All right, so bus line, we'll start it. Oh, by the way, I should just very quickly mention, I corrected a couple of the issues from the previous episode. Again, appreciate the comments pointing these out. You guys are like eagles, the way you spot certain small things when they're only shown for like a second in the video. It's really crazy. Um, but yeah, there was, uh, I, I'd prevented garbage trucks moving on this rather than buses, so that's fixed now, so thank you. Also, I see people saying, like, you haven't put down any pathways or anything. We've got loads of pathways. Lots of people use them. I feel like, um, in this new area, I don't, and that's fair, but some people were saying, like, just over this way. They're actually mentioning the commercial zones don't have many pathways. There's quite a lot, actually, I think. Quite a lot of pathways. There's a pathway, like, here, going between there. All these estates that we put down, largely speaking, have pathways that take people out, and then they have crossings and stuff to get over, so... I'm not seeing any issue there, people are using the footpaths, and some of them are very, very busy indeed. In fact, the one that goes across to work, I noticed, it depends at the time of day, but in the mornings and in the evenings, you'll see a lot of people uh, on that bridge. So I'm pretty happy with that. Okay, so let's do this bus route, and let's focus up a bit. So we'll just start on the opposite side of where one of the lines started here. So we'll start maybe here, this is the commercial district. So we'll create this line, it's obviously going the opposite direction, and we'll just continue it around, and just follow, every stop is going to be right next to, the, you know, right across from the ones that are there already. And I guess, so one's clockwise, one is anti-clockwise, we could just call one north and one south, I don't really know, or east and west, northbound, westbound. Is that what we want? Uh, I guess so. It's kind of weird that it doesn't go through the roundabout. I think I actually have a fix for that. Because it did that before, right? The other one doesn't do that either. And I feel like they should go around the roundabout, but it doesn't really matter. Because this is a... We have, like, bus lanes here, but they don't need to use this part. They just take a, a turn up this way. The initial idea was that they go this way, around the roundabout, up, and then just through there. Maybe this is better. I don't know. But we'll... Excuse me. Also put down another bus lane on the other side in a moment. All right, so just really quickly, we've just done that route, but what we need to do is I just don't like seeing all the buses come out at the same time. It causes little backlogs. So it's a little micromanagey, but I'm going to just tone this way down here at the beginning. So we'll just let four buses come out, and then we'll let another four out or something a bit later, and we'll monitor it and see how it's doing. Now, we need to name it. So we had the blue line. We'll call this blue north and then blue south. I know it's more, well, there's no orientation. We can call this north if we want to, so it doesn't really matter. But one's the blue north, one's blue south. All good. All right, we'll just let time play with that. See how we get on for a little bit. Also, it was pointed out in the comments, another one from Grunder Gessel, with a longer username that I can't pronounce, but he said, regarding the bus line, I hope you create counterclockwise blue line. Also, the bus station is different from the bus depot. The station is for people to change different buses, while the depot is a place where you store the buses. Yes, so I was kind of just querying that, and I felt like some Oh, damn, all these trees just grew in. I felt like something was off when I was reading it. So, yeah, biofuel bus depot is where the buses come from, so effectively. A bus station, as I'm sure is pretty obvious to everyone now, uh, basically it's just like a, a, an almost a hub that you could put down where multiple buses will park in and then pull out, and it's just like a nice big place for an exchange to happen between routes. 
But you can just double up bus routes. You can put the same, like, um, multiple lines can use the same route, so, and the, uh, the same stop, I should say. So I'll probably do that as well at some point. Um, so let's clear these trees, because they look a bit weird. Yeah, I think it's because, I don't know why, I think, see the way we've got things here, I think they, they grow, you know, um, because they were there already for some reason, but if we delete them, they shouldn't really reappear, I don't think, in the future. You could as well just go mental and uh, just do this and be like, yeah, well, look at all the trees that are apparently, I've only got trees toggled. Well, they're definitely gone now, so, anyways, alright, so what's next? Ah, yeah, so I've got an idea for the center here before we check back on things. I noticed there's just like a lot of cars parking everywhere. Some comments were saying like, you know, you could use the old town policy to eliminate larger vehicles and things like that. So I want to promote more people parking in the actual car parks or just taking up less of the road space and less traffic coming in here, getting out and things like that. They should be getting out on the edge in some sort of car park rather than coming all the way in and then walking further in the commercial district if they can. So let's begin that. I'm actually going to delete these two car parks. And then we're going to put down a new one. We're going to put down the multi-story. Quite a big one, but I think it'll look okay here. Now, it doesn't actually normally fit, because it's just encroaching that line a little bit. But if we anarchy it, it'll be okay. And there we go. They love it. They absolutely love it. And we've got two different variants. This one has a more stylized look to it. But I actually kind of prefer the concrete one. So I'll stick it with that. Now, it was my understanding when I started this series, I told people that these don't really operate like car parks, but apparently they do. People use them as a place to stop, leave their car, and it counts as a visitor. It's in the park category, like as a regular park in Plaza. But I did watch it before with the other car parks that people will park their car and then they get out and walk somewhere else. So it's like, oh, okay. It's not just treated like a park. It does seem to kind of function like a car park. I know that might seem obvious to people, but I was just told that no, it's not a traditional car park. It's a You need mods for that. It's actually a, quote, park that people are, quote, visiting for entertainment, you know. But it seems to be the case that they'll actually leave their car there and go do other things. Um, now, we've got a path that goes between this restaurant area. There's a path that goes between these two. It might look better to move these. We'll use the move tool again to do this, cheat a little bit. Alright, so if we grab this, we turn on the zoning. Let me just grab this and move it over a bit. Ah, just really quickly before I do that, let's just say that this is commercial. Okay, so it should be a bit happier with moving now. Yeah, it stays green, so that's good. Okay, so they're pretty lined up with the grid, and then we'll grab the pathway tool and just put that path back in, effectively. And that gives us a nice, a bit more of a seamless connection between the uh, trees and then the actual paving. Alright, cool. Is that good? Yes, <laughs> is the answer. Um, and it's not zoned anymore. Nice. Okay, that's what we want. All right, so we've got low-density commercial building, a busy corner shop. Yeah, suddenly, out of nowhere, people have money to spend, I guess. Now we don't even have the room for all of this. And has the commercial filled up down this way? Oh, it has. Actually, the ones outside the college have actually even grown. Yeah, I wish it wasn't so big, but unfortunately it is. It's actually getting even higher. Wow, 42 out of 42 visitors. Wow, the place is pop- I don't know what happened. The place is popping off. I would like it to- I'll keep this historical. I don't want it to ever get bigger than that. And maybe this one too. These are already too big in my opinion, but we could do a swap at some point. If I can see one that's the same size as this. And move it over to a different one over here. But yeah, it's nice to see. They're actually filling it in. We could do with putting a bit more commercial even here. All right, I wasn't done with this area though, so I'm waiting for money to come up as well because I have other plans to build something else here, which I'll talk about in a minute. Um, but something else I wanted to try. Let's turn off some of the parking on this surrounding area. So no parking here or here or there. You're not allowed to park in here. You gotta use this multi-story and walk. Hopefully that works and people do do this. 
Now, I've said no parking on the streets here, but people do pull into their own drives to park, so that's fine. The people who live here are going to be okay with this. Alright, so there's a total no parking zone in here. So cars should never really be using this area too, in too much of a busy way. And they can't park on the bus routes anyway, so that's all good. Speaking of bus routes, let's maybe increase that second bus route now. Let another four vehicles come out. It'll take a little while for, before we really truly see the effect of it. Um, but soon enough, people will start actually crossing over to get the other line. Speaking of, if we go over to the commercial district down here. So we have a... Where's the bus? There it is. We've got a bus line right here, and then one across. So what I was thinking we could do is just pop in a little crossing so that people who are walking through here can get over to it. And I don't want to do it here. I think it'll shift the bus either way. So we'll just put a crossing down here, maybe. So is it better to have the crossing before or after? Probably before. Although it's, I guess it's either way. All right, so we have our crossing in. And over time, people will then come from Franklin Heights, the commercial center here, down towards, they'll just cross over, and it's good, it's a high school as well, so people use this place for multiple reasons. And there's buses over this way too. They're waiting right here. Nice crosswalk there already for them, joining to the path that leads out. Love it. It's getting kind of dark, what time is it? Uh, it's only 5 p.m. Wow, it seems really dark. Sometimes the weather can change the darkness, but sometimes my settings get a bit messed up. People have asked me, can I post those settings, by the way? Uh, yeah, around episode 10 or so, I'll put up a video that's just the graphical settings. So I will do that. Now, yeah, something went wrong with this bus line, it looks like. Oh, no it didn't. Sometimes it gets moved when you put in a node like that, but it seems like it's correct. Uh, maybe not. It's freaking out a bit. I'll just move it and then put it back. Will that correct it? It seems like it's okay now. Alright, good. Let's speed up time now that it's night time. Have we had people move in? We're up to 6,500 now. People are moving in here. Still got a demand for that commercial, though. It's funny, because the area I sort of designated to be a lot of commerce, because it took so long to grow, I've now kind of thought, like, well, <laughs> we put a giant car park in instead, and a public library. But maybe we could get rid of part of this road, or maybe part of this area here. That might make more sense as commerce as well. Something like that I wouldn't mind doing. Um, let's see. Recycling centers. 169,194. This, is this almost empty yet? We're down to 11%. That's pretty good. Let's just pause it for a little while. And how's the workforce over here? Yeah, it's dropping. 382 now. We're losing uneducated workers. We're gaining educated. In that category. But just overall, there's still uh, less than there was at the beginning of this episode. All right, so the other thing I wanted to do with some of the money we have now is put down some parks. Uh, so I was kind of having a look at this area out here, and we need to redefine the districts, actually, because our district is way too big. But we'll just get small little parks. I'm just trying to think, what could we do? Let's do health first. So I thought they could do with having a little medical clinic. We can make it look a bit different than the other ones, so that way it's more like a rural medical clinic, if that makes sense. So I was thinking this area here is a nice little kind of built-up area. I don't mind moving some people out. So maybe right there, right on the edge. And it's a good little road because lots of it has lots of connections out to the, the four-lane arter, arterial. So that's all good there. But I was thinking even next to this, maybe we could have a park or something. Actually, you know what? I've just changed my mind. Can I redo that and get my money back? I can. Oh, wow, the houses even reappeared. That's nice. I'm going to pop it over on this side. And then we'll put down parks across this way. So, small playground would be nice. Maybe the dog park if we could get... Yeah, there it is. Might shift these around in a minute. Park with trees and large playground. I think these are too big. Bouncy Castle Park. Yeah, let's go with that. So, three little amenities right next to each other right here for people to hang out with. And then what we could do maybe as well is join it with a path. Little gravel path that goes out the back. I mean, there is trees right in the middle of it, but I don't know. It's fine. <laughs> it's fine. It's more just so they can get to it. 
It's really just this bit. I don't necessarily think I needed to do that all the way in at the back there. Oh yeah, I actually went over the things, didn't I? Oh, you know what? I'll undo that. Sorry. Just the way it was when I was highlighting it. I thought that was a gap. Yeah. Okay, sorry. We'll do that again. Don't need to go that far in this time. Let's just go to here. It seems to be the edge. Alright, a little bit better. A little bit better. Anyway, we can hear all the pings going off as the houses are like, Hey, this is a great place to live. We live next to a park, across from a medical clinic, and you know what? They live across from childcare as well. Child Health Center. It's a small healthcare facility. It increases birth rate within the building's radius and offers health services to children and teens, creating a health benefit. So, how big is this? Yeah, it's not that big. It would destroy some of the houses at the back there, unless we shift it to about here. Maybe there. I know that's destroying three houses, but it, it would look weird otherwise. Ooh, yeah. Actually, on the side like that might be good. Let's do that. Alright, so health clinic, child health center. And then, you know, they've got their little playgrounds and stuff to play with. And they can just cross over if they want. Health services. And did it say that it increases birth rates? It does. Yes. Great. Alright, good. So we want to increase those birth rates because we've got too many seniors. Now we're going to do a similar thing up... Actually, we'll put down a little elementary school as well for them. Because they don't have one. So again, in the same area, why not? Could we do it right there? Yeah, and that doesn't affect the houses at the back. And maybe a car park thing in between these two. Let's see if we can fit this. Nice. It actually fits without anarchy, so that's good. I like the fact that this is tilted. I don't know if that would annoy people or tilt them, but I actually like it when buildings aren't like completely on a grid. It kind of looks nice, so... Feeling good. All right, so these guys now have great services around them. They have their own elementary school. They have their own clinic. They don't have to go too far in case it's an issue. Their kids are going to, you know, basically a daycare center, health center. It's all good. Little parks to go to, just to hang around with, bring your dog, etc. Perfect. And that's for this little area down here. So we'll give this its own district. We'll turn on the district names. So that was Spruce District. So we'll just start a new one here. Thornton Heights. Right, so Spruce District and Benty Hills. We've got to change some of these. So we have our very built-up area here. So that could be its own thing, I think. Let's just get rid of this area down here. Alright, so this is where things get busy. And it kind of stays busy all the way out this way, I would say. And then, yeah, you want to have control of the roads that lead onto the arterial. So, something like this. You're not going to... Yeah, you might as well continue. <laughs> this is going to be weird, but I think this does just need to continue all the way to Franklin Heights. So, Benty Hills is gone. Okay, so it's Spruce District. So, it's very... It's a lot more densely populated, I would say. So, we can start to cut that off maybe here. Alright, so this can be its own one. Crescent Heights. That's a cool name. Okay, so we've got Crescent Heights, Thornton Heights. Might change some of these names a little bit. Spruce District, right, where things are very urban and busy. Um, I would say Thornton Heights can go all the way up to this road here. And then this can be its own thing. Even though it's small. Because it'll continue out this way. In the future. The 
brush tool like snaps the things. It's a little finicky. I don't know why they have a tool like this when they could just, they didn't, you know, they had the zoning tool. Just like use that. I feel like that would have made a lot more sense. But oh well. So we leave it like that. So that's where things start to really get, I'd say, a bit more busy. Just make sure these guys are in there. All right, cool. I can maybe clean up some of the lines then myself. Okay, there we go. So, Spruce District. Benty Hills is gone. And then we have to give them their own policies and things. So let's just uh, keep an eye. How's traffic doing? 79. It's the first time we dipped below 80, actually. Yeah, there's a few things I'd meant to change down here. So this is going to be really micromanagey, but I'd noticed that there was a lot of cars. So they have the priority road here. Well, actually, things don't seem too bad. But I had noticed myself that a lot of cars were waiting to get out this way because they were on the priority road, or they're not on the priority road. They have the yield sign. So they've been... Oh, yeah, that's the issue. People that were trying to make it out here were actually waiting. So I'm just going to get rid of these, see how traffic flows for a while. If they need a junction, then we'll put one in. What I was also thinking is you could just stop people from taking a left here. As many real-world towns do do that. So it's like you ha you can't turn left, you have to just go straight or right. And the same with these guys. You can't turn... They can't turn right going out this way, they have to only turn left. Um, because they have a different way out. It would just encourage people to take a different junction rather than blocking this one entirely. That's all it would do. But it looks okay for now. <laughs> 80, we're up to 81. So yeah, maybe that was just a slow... A slowdown for some reason. So they're being told to wait as well. Might just get rid of the, some of these yield signs and just see, like, do they handle themselves better? You know, until it gets busy, I feel like you shouldn't put those in. But I was putting it in just anticipating that it might be very busy along that road. But we look okay. How much money are we up to? 73,000. All right, so I want a bit of a cash injection. Have we made any? We have. We've got 84 unique factory products in storage. Let's empty those out. Let's make some cash. Now, another thing I wanted to do with parking is just remove the parking on the four-lane roads here. So you don't need that. Now, if you hold shift, you can do the larger segment of the road, which is good. All right, you guys shouldn't be parking there anyway, so that's fine. Sorry about that. Phone just went off. Just had to check something. So we're back. Uh, I wanted to just have a look at how our line is now doing now that we've upgraded it. So lines overview. This is the north line was the standard one. 124 passengers so far, 46 on this one. So as expected, we've taken some of the passengers away from the other line. That, that's expected. But this one is uh, probably has too many buses out there. Maybe we'll leave it just for a little while and see see how it fills up as more and more people move in. All right, let's just continue putting down some of our services. So now on this Spring Hills district, they need their own, I would say. They don't need the child health center, maybe, but a medical clinic as well would be good. And we'll just put it somewhere on the outskirts here because this place will expand at some point. Spruce Hills will be more like this size, you know. So this would be kind of the center, I would say. That's between two junction, so maybe a bit too busy. Let's put that down there, and then we'll give them a school as well next to it. I don't think they need a car park. Not until it gets busier. Something I'm going to do now as well, finally, is click the oil resource increase my brush size, lower down the strength, and we're just going to remove some of that desert-looking terrain there. Alright. Alright, cool. Things are looking good. We're obviously should see a jump in our cash soon once this um, has been emptied. So it's been emptied now, and obviously it's going to export sorry once it's been exported i should say so once uh they reach whatever destination they're going to boom we should have a nice big cash injection um so let me have a look at my to-do list policy improvements yeah so crescent heights so what we want to do for these guys recreational use as per standard right increase tax income moderately increase tourism reduce crime rate 
increase the police budget by 15%. Don't know what the, how that affects things if there is no police station in there, but anyway. Recycling. Slightly reduce garbage accumulation and reduce tax income. That's okay. Yeah, do it. Parks and Rec. Not yet. Prefer Parks. Well, we'll leave that just for a moment. Let me head over to Thornton Heights while I'm looking at these. So yeah, Prefer Parks. Tourists in the area choose to visit parks more than the unique buildings. Parks, plazas, and park areas draw more visitors. It costs 100 per park, plaza, and park area. Now, we just put down three little parks here. I don't know if it's worth it adding 300 to my upkeep cost to get a 10% increase in visitors. I think it's probably fine. Recycle plastic. Recycling centers work more efficiently. No, we had that already. So they need their rec use as well. Parks and recreation increases the parks and plazas budget by 20% and moderate increased land value around them. Yep, do that. Recycle as well. Why not? Schools out. They prefer working over education. No, that's fine. I think I'm okay with them going to work now or going to school. Right, the Spruce District, because it's so busy, we have the city planning policies that we unlocked. Encourage biking. Sure. We don't have many bike lanes, but they are allowed to bike along the pedestrian paths. So it still is just a general encouragement, I suppose. I don't know why you wouldn't just take that on anyway. It doesn't cost you anything, so might as well encourage people to use their bikes. Heavy traffic ban. No heavy transport vehicles allowed does not affect highways. People said use Old Town. Only residents and businesses can use the area for motor vehicles. Ban other motor traffic. I don't think it bans buses though or anything, so that's still okay. We'll toggle that on and see how it goes. No loud noise in the night. Leisure specialized areas will close for the night. Reduces noise pollution caused by leisure. No, that's okay. Uh, I mean... No. <laughs> we'll think about it, but no, I think it's okay. Alright. Spring Hills. Recreational use. And then Parks and Recreation, I guess, again. And we'll put down a couple parks for those guys. Oh, yeah, the Book Fair. This one's perfect. So, Book Fair in Spruce District. The local public library organized a Book Fair. Increases happiness and entertainment within the public library's radius. Public library's upkeep is increased doubled. But I'm okay with that. 800 a week. Is that the standard amount, or is that the what we just increased it to? It's the increased amount. Okay, so 800 a week. Yeah, we just made our money. Boom. Or made some of it so far. Nice. Alright. So maybe we'll see more people coming in to use these things. How's traffic now? 81. Okay. As long as it's around 80, I'm happy. And we're not seeing anything massively backed up. Not enough educated workers. Well, we've just put down two schools. It'll take a while, but it should improve soon. Well, not soon. Probably take a couple weeks in-game at least. At the very least. A small playground. Again, do you want to go with the playground near the school? I think that would make sense. Put it on the same side of the school. And the clinic. We'll bring it to the left though, so it hits those, overlaps those houses. I'm going to remove the zoning on these guys. And we'll put something else down for them. Now, I was having a look through this. There are tons of interesting things that I didn't know that were in here. So, in the unique building section, we've got, like, all these different tiers of really cool, like, different plazas and stuff. So, I'll definitely be using more interesting parks and stuff as time goes on. For now, I'm not going to do anything too crazy. But I have been looking at them. Very cool. Very interesting. The lungs of the city. A lot of these are very interesting to me. But it's going to be just a while before we actually make use of really interesting, cool things. Almost. Um... We'll, we should use some of them, but nothing too out of the ordinary just yet. Again, another dog park maybe would be good. I used Anarchy just to, just a little bit there. They're slightly overlapping, but I think it's okay. I think it's reasonable. Alright, cool. So these guys should be a little happier as well now. They've obviously just moved in, but some of the houses are upgrading already. Upgrade underway. We have 86,000... Um, dollars. So I'll just tell you, what I'm planning on doing is removing this restaurant because not many people are using it. And what I want to build is very expensive. It is a sports hall and gymnasium. Offer citizens more exercise opportunities, giving a small health benefit to the neighborhood. But I also just think it would look cool. Fits the area nicely. We have our multi-story car park here. Traffic is looking a lot lower. Not seeing copious amounts of cars parked everywhere. And it should increase the land value, lower the noise pollution and stuff. So things should be getting better in this area. Average land value here. Look at this. Hell yeah. 
In the U.S. alone, two and a half million plastic bottles are thrown out every hour. Let's uh, open up the... Oh, we're low on electricity. Let's bring that up to 95. I should fix that. All right, let's turn on the landfill again. Let these guys roll out with the remaining 11%. Uh, let's have a look at pop um, pollution. So there we go. So we've fully cleared, cleansed the river now. The river is good. These guys don't have enough goods. Not enough raw materials. Crops. There's full storage on those ones, and they're at balanced, so I don't know what your problem is. Um, but yeah, we can see the pollution just making its way out to the river, and that, that bigger stain that was out there in the bay is slowly, f you know, fading away. So that's good. Our eco-solutions have largely worked. Not perfect, but getting a lot better. Alright, so could we follow some people around and see what's going on? Do we have any major issues? Oh, we could put in more bus routes. I, I meant to put in another uh, road like this, but on the other side where the buses come down. Yeah, let's check over the lines. Yeah, it's surprising. So the anti-clockwise route, you know, the south route, is not nearly as busy as the north route. But there's two extra lines I want to put in, so let's begin while it's in the dead of night. People won't notice as much. So we have our Belmont district here, and this is where a primary school is, or an elementary school. So we're going to create a line here. It's going to go up and around. Go here to this lovely new estate that we just built. We're going to come in down to about there, bring this in and link it onto the same bus stop as this one, bring it down, link it onto the same bus stop as this one, and then we'll go back up to maybe here. Now to link these two together, I'm not creating an alternating, alternating route for this. Yeah, you could do that. So it would continue going up there. No, that'd be weird. I feel like... Is it strange to do the same stop basically twice in a row? Yes. Hmm. Okay, maybe I didn't think this through. I thought we could go here, and then it would come down this cul-de-sac and link back up. Now, I know that's a little strange. It's funny, actually, because where I live, a bus does that. And it's actually quite annoying when you're on the bus, because he has to go down. He does a three-point turn, like, turns around and comes back out. But it does happen. I was trying to look at the road structure any other way and think, like, well... Where else could we go? So if we cut that one away, and we cut that one away. And we said, okay, right, you're back down here. You could go back out and around along this way. No, you just kind of end up where you were. What would happen if we did this, right? So we just do put two stops either side, but it's on the one route. Maybe that makes more sense. And there we go. I'll try that. Let's just try that. <laughs> Alright, we're going to make this the red route. The red line. And just to start us off, we'll start with, I don't know, four buses as well. So the interesting thing about this bus route is it's collecting people from this area, generally speaking. And then it's dropping them at the commercial district on other bus stops so that if they want to get out of here, they can. That's the idea. So we'll see how good it works, if at all. Now, some of our buildings are becoming abandoned because there's not enough educated workers to work there. And we've got big residential demand, and now we've got big commercial demand again. But it'll probably be till the next episode before I actually expand out. The idea would be we have to fill in this area next, around the lake. And we want to make this a nature reserve. And that way, then, this will be an, our area that builds up 7,500, allow us, allowing us to unlock the higher density for up here. We'll build a bridge that connects across. We'll build a, maybe another bridge up this way or something. Gonna need a bunch of money for that. Now, we have 128,000 now. I am losing money <laughs> like crazy, actually. But I'm thinking, I don't care. I'm gonna knock this and build this thing I wanted to make anyway. The gymnasium. Yes, we can afford it. All right, let's get rid of the restaurant. Sports hall and gymnasium. Right next to the public library, next to a multi-story car park, and people absolutely love it. <laughs> Alright, there we go. Oh my god, the new sports hall has an excellent indoor basketball court. Highly recommend. 
2400 upkeep per week. Maybe I should have looked at that. Uh, we'll be fine. As long as our pastries still keep getting made. Which they are. <laughs> now, how's the um, industry over here? 373. Yeah, we really need to get more people in to work there. What I'm hoping now with the child health care center, the extra education bonus, the birth rate policies or whatever. Well, it wasn't policies. It was the child health care thing. But maybe we'll start seeing an increase to this stuff. But now that the town is so much better, now I'm more comfortable increasing taxes. People keep saying, hey, you can go all the way up to 12%, no negative effects. But can you live with yourself doing that? Oh, you know what? I feel like I brought this down a percent, which might be why the commercial zone uh, zones were actually growing. Could be a little bit something to do with it. All right, let's speed up time. I'm surprised we're not making more money. For, let's see where our money's going. We can actually check the budget panel. Income expenses overview. Okay, so our income is 20,000, our expenses are 22. The parks that we put down, I guess, overall cost us 1,300. Fire service, 1,600. That's a lot for fire services. Police department and the banks, industry, the industry costs. Oh, yeah, well, that makes sense for the agriculture. So the public transport costs us 1,300, and we make 184. That seems wildly inefficient. <laughs> I thought you make money from public transport, not lose it. 179 for ticket sales for the buses. Well, this doesn't even add up. It says that postal service generates 1,200, uh, sorry, 120, and the buses cost 179. So where's the money going? Oh, that's actually just the income, sorry. So it must be the expenses and the upkeep of the buildings themselves. I get it. All right, fair enough. We did just put down huge expenses for the healthcare, but it's fine. We'll make money when we sell our stuff in here after we make it. But we can always do other things to generate tax income. Uh, let's check on these uh, the traffic situation. I'm seeing a lot more people using the roads all the way out here, which is good. Seventy-nine percent. So yeah, we are clogged here. They should flow out a bit more freely now. Yeah, surprisingly super clogged, actually. So I suppose what we could do is check where these guys are going. And also, I'm just going to remove some of these rules that we have on these roads, just at first, before we decide to how, how to solve it. So we'll just speed up time, let the traffic kind of flow out just a little bit and then we'll check what's going on but it does seem super backed up so where are you guys heading to driving to work and he works down there what about you okay interesting where did you come from back there couldn't you go along that way and come out wonder why you chose not to Let's time speed up for a bit, but I'm pretty sure they're allowed to do that. Yeah, the turns in the road seem fine. There is a yield sign there, which is, again, probably not a good idea. Just go when you can. Everyone can just go when they can until we see that not working. And when that doesn't work, then we decide how to solve it. But it looks like that might be it. It might be fixed. And that's a real world thing. I remember um, I, it was some study done in America where they actually removed traffic lights. And uh, they saw traffic flow increase. Like traffic problems went down when they removed traffic lights. So I feel like if you let people figure it out themselves, depending. Obviously, if it's not super high volume area, things work themselves out. Yeah, we're back up to 81 now. So again, it's just me saying, like, everyone has to stop here. You know, everyone has to yield and wait. This is a priority. Everyone having to do that backed everything up. But if you say, like, actually, no, just go whenever it's free, then they go. And it, things generally work a bit smoother. But if it gets the volume increases too much, then you'll need traffic lights for sure to just direct when those guys can get out. Yeah, looking all right. Money's come back up. Um, so money's just going to keep fluctuating, I think, while we're exporting different things from the farms. But uh, I suppose the, the fear would be that we're going to be exporting less and less because less people seem to be working there. 
But I'm trying to get more people in, but I think people are just generally retiring as we as they reach old age. So we started with 1,700 citizens in this episode. We're at 1,900 now. Still have 1,700 adults, though. That number's the same. So our aging population is, yeah, causing a bit of an issue. And that's to do with the mod, right? We're using a mod that changes and rebalances populations. But look how this place is, like, ancient. <laughs> people are very old here. Which is fine, but, like, when... It would be nice to know, like, when are you guys moving out, you know? <laughs> we should put down a retirement home for these guys and then clear out these houses or something. Loving the look of this area, though. Let's just take a moment to soak it in. I think it looks really cool. Public library, the little plazas across from us now. We have the gym, our little pathway that takes us out. Obviously, the new multi-story car park. And we've got someone who's, we've encouraged cycling, and there he is, on his bike. And it's nice to see businesses have actually started to move in as well. Yeah, people are biking around like crazy. Look at this old guy. You just see someone, like, just robs his cane, falls over. No one's helping him. Oh, he's right outside the police station, I suppose. Should be fairly safe. He's crossing the road, careful. Everybody be careful. Jesus Christ, that bus is going fast. Alright, let's see how our red line is doing now that it's been down for a little while. So we should be able to spot the buses pretty easily. There's one. Yeah, there's loads of people here. Look at that. That's great. And the bus seems to be actually pretty full. Because it's leaving people behind. So we can increase the amount of buses on the route. Let's just check the line. So, 30 out of 30, 12 out of 30, 3, 3. Oh, maybe it's actually okay then. We'll just leave it for a little longer. Just a little longer. All right, we could put down another bus line, though. I know people wanted me to make a line going out to the work. Uh, maybe not... I think to the farms would be weird, but we could try that. But especially to the business park. So, something I want to do to also help cut down on that arterial traffic, just slightly, even though the arterial road is totally fine. Um, but get ahead of it, I suppose, is build a line that uses the arterial road. So... If we're on this side, moving forward, we want it to be maybe before the junction. Because if the cars are going to stop, we want it to be before that junction. So here. Here. There. There. We'll have to put in little crossroads. So, or crosswalks so they can get over to these. Yeah. And then this can just continue maybe to about there. And this will be a super pretty, pretty long route. So it's going to stop somewhere over here. Allowing people to get out and walk to the walk to work effectively. Uh, we could maybe do another one here, I guess. It's kind of a confluence area. And then what you can do is you could link up back in here. Back in here. And then what we need to do is get out back up to there. So, yeah, maybe drop some people again into the commercial center if they wanted to. And, uh, yeah, maybe there, outside the health clinic and all that stuff, and complete that line. Now, we can build a, a an alternating one for this one. So, we'll call it, we'll give this, we'll call this a yellow line, because it goes to the industri industrial area. So, there's the red line. This is going to be yellow. Call it north. Don't know if I can copy and paste that color, can I? For the if we duplicate it, but anyway. Um, all right, so we'll just lower it down to again just four buses for now, and we'll gradually bring it up. We'll let time play. I'll put in the next one, so just opposite. So create a new line. We'll start it there. Why not? And it just matches its buddy. Now we reduced the traffic in this commercial area, so I think having the bus lanes come in here would be fine. Also, I just forgot we're supposed to put down another bus lane. Like a road with a baked-in bus lane. I forgot to do that. We'll have to do that right after this. And then maybe we'll call it for this episode. See how all this goes. See how much complaining you guys have to do about my bus routes. <laughs> oh, I just realized, actually. You know what? If we're going to go out there, we should um, stop before the junction. Because what buses do is they'll pull in and then they'll block junctions and stuff. So we don't want them to do that. Stop before the junction.
So I guess you want to complete the line? Actually, no. Get rid of that. Complete the line, but drag this stop back. There we go. Yeah. All right, and we'll just call that, you know, yellow south. Yeah, I don't think I can copy and paste that color, which is kind of annoying. So we'll just try to match it by eye. Yeah, that looks pretty close. Maybe um, just a bit down there. All right, cool. So again, yellow south, that can just have four buses for now as well. And we'll see how we get on with that. All right, let's set time play. So while that's happening, while it's figuring all that stuff out, let's put down and upgrade the road that a lot of those bus lanes or buses are using to have a baked in bus line. So we'll go upgrade, we'll keep our zoning on, that's fine. So we come up this way. I'm okay with not having a bus lane in there, but here, yes. Oh, sorry, here. Buses go down this way, don't they? Yeah, they go down and then around and up again. <laughs> Some of them do. Hmm. Maybe it'd be better for these guys to just come down this way. Go back out and then go back up. That might make more sense for the blue line. So I might adjust that myself in between episodes. But what I'll just continue to do now is just put that road down so you know where things are going. Some of these houses are going to get destroyed, I guess, because the road is marginally bigger. Anyway, this needs to go all the way out to Franklin Heights, our commercial district. And I suppose why not just bring it down there. Okay, so that's a lot of bus lanes. And we did destroy a lot of houses doing that. But it should make things a bit smoother. Especially long term. Alright, so what we'll have to do now with this road... Oh, I suppose it's still got this little bit to do. Okay, he's using the right thing. But just in case, I know this can be a little tedious. Um, but just in case, we want to put vehicle restrictions on these. There we go. And uh, yeah, we just want to say no buses in the center, right? And we'll just hold shift. So we just have to go until the next junction. So we click here, go into the next junction. So we turn sideways here. This one's kind of already done for us until we get to here. And that's just a guarantee they don't use the center. For the most part, the game handles this itself, but some just sometimes I notice it doesn't. And not just in rare exceptions where you want a bus to overtake or something like that. It's like, it just doesn't seem to use it. I, I don't know why. Uh, so it's kind of just as a guarantee of forcing them to do it correctly. And it's kind of nice just to follow our route and check on it anyway. Just when we're building it for this first time, see if there's any glaring mistakes on it. That's a nice long big section as well. Goes all the way down to here. And I think doubling up some of the bus routes like this is going to be a good thing. Uh, so people can make their connections and cross over and stuff like that. Alright, pretty good. There's one thing that can happen with doing this though, which is at things like roundabouts, they don't know that they can get onto this. So let's just fix that. So we click here and we just say, yeah, you can go into there or there. That is your rule. And here, if you were going out, you could go here or there and you could do the same. That's all you got to do. So just make sure that that's happening down here as well. Oh, you don't need to. It's not a roundabout. It would have to happen here, but I don't think anyone uses this. But just in case for the future, we'll just pre-plan that.
All right, there we go. Now, if we check our bus routes, hopefully they haven't moved or changed, because sometimes that does happen. Ah, did I not color the other lane properly? Or the other line? Yeah, bus north <laughs> has totally changed, or bus south, sorry, has completely changed route as to where it wants to go to get back in. So let's, uh, which one is that? That's bus south. All right, let's just fix it. It should be okay to fix. It's probably just some little mistake somewhere. So going here, it's not going around the roundabout to get down here. It's going around a super long way. So it's probably just some lane connector issue again. So let's just fix that. Because we just changed this road. So you are allowed to go there. You're allowed to hop over. You're allowed to go like that. You're allowed to go all the way. Yeah, so you should be fine. So I think I just need to put down another stop and then remove it just to trigger it redrawing what it needs to, where it needs to go. Yeah, for some reason it doesn't want to come in this way though. Don't know why that is. So if I put down a stop there and I brought it in, this would match what it, this is doing what it should, but it has to have this other stop on it. I don't really know why. Otherwise it's going to go out there and go around. Oh, I know what you could do though. There's a nice way around this. Vehicle restrictions, select this road and say no buses. No buses can go that way. And this means that we can actually remove that extra thing I just put in. Sorry, it's going to here. Always forget that. All right, so we got rid of their stop, but now the lines are still correct. So there we go. There's our line network as it stands. So a yellow north and south, a blue north and south, and a red that goes around Belmont District and tries to collect people from there. So we don't have anything really for the smaller Thornton Heights or Spring Hills yet if they needed one. I don't know if they necessarily do. They're not that far from some of the stops. These guys, I mean, if you live out here, I guess you are, but people do walk those distances, but still, probably better to help them with that. You could have something that collects people from Crescent and Thornton that brings them into the center as well, maybe. Uh, so, if we just let time play a little bit, speed it up again, we can have a look at how our lines are doing. So, if we look at the yellow line, there's 36 people wait waiting at this stop, which is interesting. It's actually in the center of the city. Some people are going to be using it to get to work. Yellow north. Uh, same sort of situation. Not that busy. We've only got four buses out on it at the moment. The red line gotten a lot busier. Four vehicles in use. Uh, see, it's the morning time as well, so that's actually kind of harder to gauge. I should really um, fine-tune our budget a bit, because during the night, just people aren't traveling as much. So we'll bring this down. There'll be less buses running at night. Oh, the humanity. The wood residents. But we're making money again. Money is coming up naturally without even selling anything, so that's good. Here's our little fire trucks coming in. God, they're so loud. That's so cool seeing them do it. it I, I just think that's awesome. <laughs> he even went up the stairs before he went in the house. That's cool. All right, good job, guys. Handled. Quickly, efficiently, no problem. They'll be fine. They've got insurance. Oh, yeah. So is that um, landfill emptied out now? Hey, it's totally empty. Excellent. So now it can be demolished. Boom. And we had, the, they loved it. They were like, yeah, thank you. <laughs> Great. And they might level up because of that soon. How's the... So, in total, this is actually interesting. So, only 167 people have died. Two people died last week. That is super interesting to see, like, find, like you know, to know how the senior situation is panning out. I can't remember what screen it is, but there's something that shows you birth rates, isn't there? Versus death rates. 
eight births this week, two deaths this week. Okay, well maybe eventually it'll start evening out, but people leave the city if they don't have houses, so it's not that simple. You could be giving birth to a lot of people. It's not like you, they all just become adults and work for you. They, you know, half of them will leave if you don't have accommodation. Jobs available. Jobs available, 3,000? Holy shit. Unemployment at a staggeringly low 2%. 3,000 jobs available. That is crazy. Must be in all these factories, I guess. It just stacks up. 20 jobs available. Yeah, look at this. Oh my god. Wow, I had no idea. And then I suppose the commerce the commercial zone probably has jobs available as well. Yeah, 5. None in that one, actually. 0, 5, 11, 9, 4. Hmm. I guess it's just when you... I mean, this is the entire industry area and then obviously our agricultural sector. 20 jobs available. Yeah, geez. So here, how many? About 140. God. Uh, more than that, 180 or so. Yeah. Anyway, last thing we'll just check. How's traffic now? 81% still busy on the roundabouts, but it's all free-flowing. It's just, it's just heavy traffic. That's okay. They seem to be working just fine. This is working just fine. Little slowdowns now and then. They might need a junction. Somewhere here, I feel like we need traffic lights. One of these two. Probably this one, just to let them flow out. But I think they're still managing just fine for now. Then we have our bus routes getting clogging up the roads here. But it is a busy bus route. I had actually meant to do something with this. I noticed it before. We turn on zoning. We click this house. And then we just rotate it. Okay. I have to pause time to do it. There we go. So now they're not facing out on the bus route, they're facing out this way, which just makes a little bit more sense, I think. It's about the details, really. But yeah, great to see such big demand for residents, uh, residential. So in the next episode, I guess we're going to just start expanding out this way, try to link these two areas and uh, pre-determine where this road will go. Then we can buy out this plot in future. We'll either be buying out this plot or buying out this one. Haven't decided just yet. Because... Uh, it's actually quite a difficult thing with the way the milestones are structured. We get one 2x2 two two area. We don't get another one then again until we hit 16,000. So whatever plot we get, I have to make sure I can fit 10,000 people into it. You know, so th will this be enough for 10,000? Maybe. This was enough for 7.5, so if with the high density, I hope so. But this might be a bit too risky to go with this area because it's so much water. Maybe I'll have to go with this just in case. Alright, that's going to have to be it for this episode. Let me know, again, feedback that you have, what you'd like to see, and uh, I'm going to do a once-over on some of these policies. I was kind of quickly doing them during the episode, so I'll just quickly do that. Policies for Franklin Heights, Belmont, and so on and so forth, and then I'll address that at the beginning of the next one. All right, that's got to be it. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.